The Frog Prince There once lived a princess who was very, very beautiful. She loved to spend her time outdoors, playing among the plants and trees. Her father, the king, loved her dearly. On her birthday, he gave her a lovely golden ball. Oh, what a nice ball! Thank you, father. I will have a super time playing with it. The princess ran outside with her ball. It was a lovely sunny day, and she had so much fun bouncing the ball, throwing it up and catching it. What a great gift father has given me! I can spend hours just playing with it. Up and down it goes, my golden ball. Bounce, bounce, bounce. Bounce, bounce, bounce. Up and down it goes, my golden ball. Bounce, bounce, bounce. <laughs> Whippee! Wee! 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 Ah, oh, how I love my golden ball. The princess spent the whole day playing with her ball, till it started getting dark. Let me throw the ball high just one more time before I go in. The princess threw her ball as high as she could. Alas, because it was getting dark and she could not see well, the ball fell on the ground, bounced, and rolled away into a nearby pond. Oh no! My beautiful ball! How will I get it out of the dirty pond water? There's so many water lilies there, I cannot even see the ball. The princess sat down beside the pond, crying her heart out. Suddenly, she heard a sound beside her. Stop that awful noise! Can't you see I'm upset? I can see that, princess. That is why I have come to help you. You? Help me? And how would you do that? Well, I could jump into the pond and look for your golden ball. I saw how much fun you were having with it the whole day. Really? Would you do that for me? Oh, please, please, please find my golden ball. Of course I will do it. And I will not give up till I find it. But I need something for that. What do you want? I will give you anything if you find my ball. Hear what I want before you make your promise, sweet princess. Come on, come on, anything. Just get my ball back. Well, I want you to be my friend. You must play with me. Let me dine with you. And then let me sleep beside you on your pillow. Do you agree? Are you totally mad? The choice is yours. You either agree to my condition, or I will say goodnight now. Hey, wait, wait! I have no other way of getting my ball back. I better agree for now and see how to handle this creature later. Oh, dear Froggy, of course you can be my friend. You'll get the ball, and we will both play with it. I promise. Well then, here I go. The frog dived into the pond. The princess waited impatiently for him to come up, pacing up and down. Finally, up popped the frog from the water, holding the golden ball. There you are, princess. I have found your precious ball. The princess snatched the ball and fled away fast with it, without even thanking the frog. Hm, my friend indeed. Wonder if he's seen that dirty face of his in the mirror. The princess happily forgot about her promise to the frog, thinking she would never see him again.
The next day when she was having dinner with her father, the king, there was a splishy, splashy kind of sound. And then a gentle knock on the door. Yahoo! Princess, this is your friend the frog here. You made me a promise that you would let me dine with you at your table, remember? I am very, very hungry now. Good heavens! I completely forgot about that pest. Didn't think he would actually come to the palace himself. What is this I hear? Er, nothing, father. Nothing. It's just a stupid frog who wants to be my friend. Well, I would like to hear what the stupid frog has to say. Oh, father, I don't think we should bother. Princess, I said I want to hear what the frog wants. The princess had to obey her father, so she reluctantly went to bring in the frog. Nice to see you, friend. Why did you have to come here, you creepy thing? I would have come out and played with you. Ah, princess. I waited for you the whole day, and you did not come. I was missing you so much. Come, eat and get lost. Why are you being so mean and rude to me? I helped you find your golden ball, didn't I? What is the matter, may I ask? Oh, nothing much, your majesty. Yesterday the princess's golden ball fell in the pond, and she promised me that she would be my friend, let me dine with her, and let me sleep on her pillow if I found her ball. But I think now she doesn't want to be my friend. Is this true, princess? I didn't really mean that, father. I needed to get my ball. But how can I be friends with this, this... That's enough. I'm ashamed of you. If you've made a promise, you should honor that promise. I love you dearly, but I cannot allow this behavior. Now be good and say sorry to the frog. The princess was furious. Say sorry to that dirty, creepy thing? But she had no choice but to do as the king said. Blech. Disgusting fellow! No table manners! And now I have to make him sleep beside me? What have I landed myself into? So when the princess went to bed, she carried the frog with her and put him beside her pillow. Will you tell me a story, princess? If you don't behave yourself and go to sleep, I will choke you. The frog looked frightened and quietly moved away. Oh, I didn't mean that. You know I didn't. Look, I'm sorry, okay? I'm just very tired. So please go to sleep and let me sleep also. <coughs> the next morning, the frog had left before the princess woke up. Now where has the frog gone? I was nasty to him yesterday. I hope he is not feeling too bad about it. The princess did not see the frog the whole day, but when dinner time came, it hopped onto the table beside her with a sweet smile. Oh, so you are back. Last night, I thought you might be angry with me. Oh, my dear, dear princess. I couldn't be angry with you, even if I wanted to. And I promise not to belch again. The princess smiled at the frog, and they finished dinner and went to bed. Come, you can sleep on my pillow, and I'll even tell you a story to make up for yesterday. The frog was soon asleep, and like the day before, he had gone by the time the princess awoke, coming back again in time for dinner. Why do you leave without saying good morning? Oh, were you missing me? Come along, it's time for your story. No, my dear. I am very tired today, 
and just want to sleep. The frog soon fell asleep, snoring away softly. The princess looked at him with a smile. He's not such a bad guy, actually. So saying, she gently kissed the frog and then fell asleep. She woke up the next morning expecting the frog to have gone as usual, but what did she see? There was no frog, but a very, very handsome young man lying beside her. Who, who, who are you? And what are you doing on my bed? My beautiful princess, I have been waiting for you to wake up. But who are you? I am the ugly frog, your friend. For such a long time, I have been watching you from the pond, loving you from far. What? Yes, my dear. A very long time ago, a nasty witch cast a horrible spell on me. She turned me into a frog and said I would remain one till someone kissed me. The spell was broken last night when you kissed me. I can't believe this. Now, let's go to your father, the king so I can ask for your hand in marriage. If he had not made you keep your promise, I don't know when the witch's spell would have been broken. So the princess and the handsome young prince went up to the king, where the prince told him his story. And now, your majesty, I would like to marry your daughter and take her with me to my kingdom, where my mother and father must be waiting for me to return. Of course, young man. It would indeed make me a very happy man if you married my daughter. Off went the prince with his princess to his kingdom. Where they were welcomed with a lot of joy and rejoicing, living a happy life thereafter. Sleeping Beauty There was once a kind and wise king who ruled over a large kingdom. The only thing that the king and queen were sad about was that they had no child. But finally, their prayers were answered, and they were blessed with a beautiful baby daughter. I'm so happy today. The little princess is so beautiful. I couldn't have asked for anything more. We must celebrate. We shall have a grand ball and invite everyone in the kingdom. I would like everyone to come and bless my lovely child. The king instructed his men to arrange for the celebrations and invite everyone to come and bless the princess. All the fairies were invited also. But the king's men forgot to invite one fairy who lived deep in the woods and who was known to be mean and wicked. At the ball, all the fairies came up to bless the little princess. I bless the princess with beauty. I bless the princess with wisdom and a kind heart. Suddenly, the mean fairy went up to the queen. You did not invite me to the ball, and you shall pay for it. Everyone else has blessed the princess, but I will put a curse on her. When she is 16, she will prick her finger on a spindle and fall dead. Oh no, 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 no. I am so sorry that you were not invited. Please, please do forgive us. We have been blessed with a child after so many years. Do not take away our happiness. Please take your curse back. I beg of you. I said you shall pay, and so you shall. (laughs) So saying, the evil fairy left the ball, leaving everyone shocked. Oh, how could she? She doesn't deserve to be called a fairy. She's just an evil witch, I say. I don't think I will be able to bear this, my dear fairies. Isn't there anything you can do to break this curse? All the fairies got together to see what they could do. 
After their discussion, they approached the queen. Your Majesty, it is not possible for us to break the curse of the evil fairy. But what we can do is make sure that the sweet princess will not die, but fall into a deep sleep for one hundred years. Then, the kiss of a young prince will awaken her. But by then we shall all be dead, and when she awakens, she will not recognize anyone. Oh, how will we enjoy seeing our daughter grow? Once again, the fairies put their heads together to find a solution, and after discussing for some time, they went back to the queen. Your Majesty, we have thought about this. When the princess falls into a sleep, everyone in the palace will also fall asleep, and when she awakens, the whole palace will awaken with her. This way, she will know everyone. There was nothing more anyone could do, and everyone was very sad. Listen, everyone. First thing tomorrow morning, go out and destroy all the spindles in the kingdom. Not a single spindle should be left. The king's men set out the next morning and broke and burned every spindle they could find. However, they did not see an old spindle lying in a small, dusty room in the palace itself. Years passed. The princess grew up to be a beautiful and kind young lady. Everyone in the palace loved her. She spent her days roaming around the palace and in the beautiful gardens outside. And then, the princess turned 16. People came from far and away to wish her. I am so overjoyed to see our daughter grow up to be such a gracious and charming young lady. But now the curse of the evil fairy is coming back to haunt me. Let us not worry, my dear. I've done my best to ensure that all the spindles in the kingdom have been destroyed. If there is no spindle, the princess will not be able to prick her finger on it. I know, I know. But the face of that evil fairy and her horrible curse just won't leave me in peace. The princess spent the entire morning meeting all the people who had come to wish her on her 16th birthday and then went to her room to rest. In the evening, she decided to be by herself and explore some parts of the large castle that she had not seen. I never realized the palace was so huge. I don't remember ever seeing these rooms before. Oh, what is this? It seems to be some sort of tunnel. I wonder where it leads to. The princess was very curious and started to go along the tunnel, which led to a dusty room full of old things. <gasps> I never knew there was a room full of such old things in the palace. Oh, there seems to be a light coming from the far corner and some funny sound. I wonder what it could be. The princess made her way to where she could see the light and hear the sound. When she went near, she was surprised to see an old woman sitting and working with some yarn on some kind of rod. The princess did not know that that was a spindle, as her father had instructed that all the spindles in the kingdom be destroyed. And alas, the old woman sitting there was none other than the horrible fairy who had cursed the princess. She had somehow entered the palace, and with a spell, she had made the princess follow the path to the old, dusty room. Hello. I don't think I've seen you before in the palace. What are you doing? I am spinning yarn, can't you see? Oh, I'm so sorry, but I've never seen anything like this before. Hmm, would you like to try it? It is not very difficult, you know. The poor princess had no idea about the evil plan of the wicked fairy and eagerly agreed to try her hand at the spindle. And, as the witch had cursed when she had been born, she pricked her finger and immediately fell into a deep slumber. <laughs> I 
had told the queen she would pay for not inviting me to her grand ball, and I have now taken revenge for my humiliation. <laughs> I will take her precious daughter's body and show her. <laughs> The evil fairy carried the princess to the main part of the palace to show the queen how she had taken her revenge for her insult. But what a strange sight met her eyes. Time had come to a total standstill, and everyone in the palace seemed to have just frozen in whatever act they were performing. Hey, what is this? What has happened to all these stupid people? The evil fairy did not know that the good fairies had changed her curse, and that the princess, together with all the other people in the castle, had fallen into a deep, deep sleep. My revenge is complete, but I would have been happier to see the queen's expressions on seeing her dead daughter. Ah, well, it's time for me to be on my way. Away walked the evil fairy from the palace, not knowing the princess was not dead. A hundred years passed, and everything and everyone in the palace remained frozen in time. But the beautiful gardens around the palace were overgrown with wild plants, and now looked like a thick forest. In fact, the palace could now not be seen by anyone who was passing by. One fine day, a prince from a neighboring kingdom was out hunting. He was an adventurous fellow and was not scared to go into the deep forest. Suddenly, the prince happened to see something much farther ahead. Goodness gracious, whatever can that be? It looks like the tip of a tower. But why would there be a tower in the middle of such a dense forest? I have to see for myself. The prince cut through all the wild plants and bushes growing along the way, his feet crunching on the fallen twigs, till he finally reached the palace. I can't believe my eyes. A palace in the middle of such a thick forest. I wonder if there's anyone around. Though I can't imagine that anyone could stay here. The prince made his way into the palace and couldn't believe the sight that met his eyes. I need to pinch myself. I seem to be dreaming. Ouch! Okay, so this is no dream. But I just can't figure out what this is. The prince wandered from room to room, seeing the same scene of people who seemed to be frozen like statues. Then the prince entered the room where lay the princess, and on seeing her, he just stopped. What a beautiful young lady prettier than any I have ever seen. The prince could not stop himself. He went forward, bent down beside the princess, and kissed her smooth white forehead. No sooner had he done this that the evil fairy's curse was broken. The princess opened her eyes and came to life, and with her awoke all the other people in the palace. The king and queen rushed to their daughter, Tears of joy in their eyes. Can someone please tell me what is happening? Oh, young man, we have all been under the curse of an evil fairy. And by kissing the princess, you have broken the curse and brought us all to life. We don't know how to thank you. Well, I know how you can do that. I fell in love with your daughter as soon as I saw her. And you would make me the happiest man by giving me your daughter's hand in marriage. Young man, we couldn't ask for anything more. And so the palace that had slept for 100 years finally came to life. The silence was replaced with days of music and laughter and dancing to celebrate the wedding of the princess to her handsome prince who lived happily ever after.